Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about pitfalls that you should avoid when getting a body hair transplant. These are the things that Dr. Mwamba and Dr. Bridges run into with potential patients like yourself who are interested in getting a body hair transplant, making the wrong decision or decisions that they wouldn't recommend. So Dr. Bridges, first with you, what are things that you see people coming in and asking you about body hair transplants that you don't really feel like they, they've gone the right direction? Well, one of the things that people will do is they'll have in their, in their mind, well, if we just take this kind of body hair and put it in this particular place, then everything will be great. But some of these things, they may not, you know, be particularly obvious to a person, a, a, a patient particularly, mm -hmm. early on. And we've had people come in and, and, and say that, well, I want to I save my scalp hair for later on down the line. So let's just use all body hair on my first hair transplant and that should be great, right? Well, no, it's not going to be great because the scalp hair is always superior uh, in many ways to, to body hair, uh, especially some of the, the some types of body hair. So you have to be able to listen to someone who has the expertise and counsel you. And, and sometimes people are very adamant about that and it can be mm. difficult because, you know, it, there have been times where we've had to tell people, you know, I'm sorry, we just we, we don't feel it's ethical to do that particular type of procedure, or use that particular type of of donor hair. So, but but please think about this long and hard, and do your research, and because you can go down the road and find somebody who'll do what you're asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, but that may not be your best option, you know. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of people have gone down that road um, and regretted it mightily later on in their lives. You know? Yeah, I feel like if someone like you that's an expert in body hair transplants tells a patient this is not in your best interest, you know? I mean, you are you make your living by doing body hair transplants. So if you're willing to tell somebody don't get this done, then it's probably not a good idea for them to, to go that direction. Yeah, and you're right. And the vast majority of patients, you know, 99 plus percent are more than happy to listen to our counsel and take our advice on things like this. But everyone once in a while you get someone who's just adamant. And then, you know, the best thing that we can do is say no. Sometimes the most effective and most ethical uh, and compassionate thing we can do is say no and just, and, you know, really, really strongly recommend the patient that they think long and hard about this. Give us some time. Uh, don't go to the first person that says they'll do it. But, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's most, the vast majority of patients do that. You know, they will listen to our counsel. Oh, I hadn't thought about it that way. I hadn't seen it through that perspective. So thanks so much. You know, I think you say, you know, really saved me from going down the road. I didn't want to go down. So, and that's happened a number of times in our practices. Cool. Yeah. And Dr. Mamba, so what's the first thing that comes to your mind as far as things patients um, are, mistakes they're making? The mistakes they're making is to think like uh, body hair is uh, like scalp hair. Okay. It grows. So now today you have body hair. I can fill all my head with body hair. You can do that. But you have to know that everything becomes about contrast. Mm -hmm. You know, body hair are different. And especially if you look at chest hair. Yeah. Beard hair can be uh, curly when your scalp hair is straight. Mm -hmm the coarseness, the color will be different. So when you want to do body hair, you have to make sure. That's why like, we talk a lot about matching. What, what matching means? Matching means like you have to do something that could help to blend and to still look natural. Because you don't want to, let's say, you have a vertex that is empty and somebody has full head of hair and they say, I want a body hair here. You can put body hair here and it grows but it looks so different from your scalp hair, and you don't look natural at all. Wow. So, and then it becomes really, really bizarre. Hmm. All the things that you have... I actually really want to see that, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. And other things also that uh, most of the time you have to be aware of, especially today, I know that a lot of people like to use bad, uh, beard hair because mm -hmm. it's easy to extract and it grows pretty much faster mm -hmm. comparing to the other part of the body hair. But you have to make sure like bead hair is kind of also strange when you touch. Mm -hmm. You know, the softness, the, the quality when you touch your bead hair, it looks like rush, it's like a brush. Mm -hmm. So that sensation, some patient doesn't feel quite comfortable to have that on the head. Gotcha. When you want to do body hair, never consider that as 
your first solution. Mm. It has to be something additional. And even though when you use it, trying most of the time to mix it with scalp hair so it can blend. It's like body hair doesn't have to dominate. Yeah. Your scalp hair has to dominate and the body hair comes alongside to fill in. It's like when you use even the SMP because you're playing with the contrast. You're trying to make something a little bit to help your main things, which is your scalp hair. So Dr. Bridges, if I'm going to be choosing a body hair transplant surgeon, you said in another video of ours that that person, that surgeon should have been doing FUE for a minimum and very often for two years. So they should have been doing a ton of FUE cases itself without body hair for two years before doing body hair. And so that's a, a nice guideline to go by. Is there anything else as far as um, the consultation process that you feel like, like what should someone do um, if they're interested in having some kind of FUE slash body hair transplant with a surgeon? Well, do the research and ask pointed specific questions. Sometimes people have they kind of get, you know, a little bit overwhelmed when they're in a physician's office and they feel like, oh, I forgot all the things. I was Make a list. Mm -hmm. Make a list of everything that's come up when you've done your research and just ask the person. And if the person answers your questions reasonably and it seem like they're well-versed in the procedure and have a history with it, you'll know that. Mm -hmm. And if But you feel like they're tap dancing around your questions and don't really... Um, you know, have a real good grasp of the procedure, uh, the, you know, the pitfalls and the, and the benefits of it, how you match, you know, hair types and where on the, in the head, you know, various types of, of body hair are going to be best utilized for the mm -hmm. patient, then, you know, you'll, you'll get that feel. Yeah. Know, most yeah. people are intuitively going to get that. Yeah, it was very obvious is immediately speaking with you guys today that you really knew what you were talking about and every aspect of, of what we were discussing with my hair, with the scar and with different hair types types throughout, you know, on top of my body and everything. Yeah. So yeah, no, it was really obvious. I would definitely say that that's a lot of that, a lot of that gut feeling after you've, you know, gotten a chance to get some references and things like that um, is something that people should stick to. So it's amazing after all of these years, thousands of years of our development, how much we can still sometimes just stick with our gut feeling <laughs> and do pretty well. Yeah. It's a good indicator. Yeah. yeah. Thanks guys.